my channel Victoria here if it's your first time stopping by welcome um, thank you all for coming back today is a new glam with the word episode and um, since the last time I saw you guys which is a few like a week ago a lot has happened um, around the world and just um, yeah so you know I was really um, I was praying and I was just asking God for like you know, like a message that was relevant to the times and just something that would really give people like hope uh, to not give up and gave me today's topic, which I think is very relevant, especially during this time that we're in, because this time is just a time where there's a lot that is still going to happen. Um, this first round that we're just seeing is really just the beginning. So everyone just needs to be ready and prepared spiritually um especially spiritually because we were not against flesh and blood guys okay but um yeah so anyways today's topic is going to be unshakable faith through uncertain times um yeah i just kept hearing in my in my spirit to talk about faith and having faith and having faith because i just feel like the way fear is being sent around the planet with everything that's going on if your faith is not planted, you know, in the word of God and rooted really truly in God, it's going to shake and you're going to begin to doubt God and be asking questions that you really shouldn't even be asking if you truly and truly believed in the word of God. So if you like this video, please don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe. And don't forget to share the video with your friends and family in case they need to hear this message. Um, another thing is I would list the would giveaway winners for last um, last week's episode. I'm going to list them in the description box. So please check the description box. So if you see your name, please reach out to me via Instagram or um, Facebook or whatever. I'll just message back on the in the comment section of maybe the last video and just let me know. Okay, hey, you mentioned my name or whatever. And then another thing is I know a lot of people don't like to sit through the whole one hour 45 minute long video to hear what I have to say so what I'm going to do is I'm also going to write down blog I'm going to make a blog post on my website where I just basically reiterate what I just said but written down because some people prefer to read put all the scriptures there all that so you guys can check my website and see all that there as you guys know God made man as both spiritual beings and physical beings um, but we know, you know, we have our spiritual, I mean, our physical bodies that basically give us, um, that allow us to function on this realm of earth. And we also have our spirit man inside of us, who is really truly who we are. So in the same way, because we have a spiritual being and a physical being, we have physical senses and spiritual senses. So when Adam and Eve sinned, they lost their spiritual senses. Okay, so... The ability to you know directly um, hear from God or to see spiritual things that you can't really see with your physical eyes but when your spiritual eyes are open you can see they lost this ability right because they because they sinned and then the next thing I wanted to let you guys know is that there are three classes of people that are basically on earth so all of us fall into one one of these three categories okay so the first one is the natural man who is the natural man a woman natural man is 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 somebody that um they don't have any understanding of spiritual things and they have not yet had an encounter with like the holy spirit um where you know the word the word of god is comes alive to them and is revealed to them um they have never had this encounter before so they are basically unbelievers so i want us to open to first corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 but the natural, non-spiritual man does not accept or welcome or admit into his heart the gifts and the teachings and revelations of the Spirit of God. For they are folly, which means they are meaningless or nonsense, nonsense to him. And he is incapable of knowing them, which is of progressively recognizing, understanding and becoming better acquainted with them. Because they are spiritually discerned and estimated and appreciated. So basically, the natural man... They don't have the revelations of the word of God. Like when they read the Bible, it's like gibberish to them. Like it doesn't make sense to them. Because when we read the Bible, in order for us to gain understanding of the Bible, the Holy Spirit has to guide us as we read. 
um, which is why when you read the Bible, like it's really good for you to pray that you know Holy Spirit reveal to me what you want me to see and what you want me to understand from this, because really and truly. The Bible just has so many mysteries and secrets that if you don't really, you know, take time and have the Holy Spirit guide you, you wouldn't get it. And that's why sometimes as well, you can read a scripture 10 million times and get a new understanding of that scripture every single time you read it. It's the Holy Spirit that guides you. So the natural man does not have this um this ability or they don't have the revelations from the Holy Spirit and they are incapable of understanding the things of 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 God. Um, the second type of person is the Kano man. Now, the Kano man is somebody that has had encounters with the Spirit. They've had encounters with the Word of God. Like they know and they believe that yes, God exists. They're still very much ruled by their flesh, and their physical uh, senses and their physical perceptions and understanding. So the Kano man will be somebody that like, okay, they've read the Word of God, but then they'll be like. Okay, but how come, um, you know, in science, it says this, like, it doesn't make sense. Like, they're always uh, looking, like, it's, 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 for some reason, they always find contradictions in the Bible. They don't accept it fully as, okay, yes, this is the truth. This is the word of God. This word is life. They f- constantly find contradictions. They rely more on their physical senses than they do on their spiritual senses. So they know the truth, but they choose not to submit to the truth basically so i want us to open to romans chapter 8 that is because the mind of the flesh with its canal thoughts and purposes is hostile to god for it does not submit itself to god's laws indeed it cannot they refuse to submit themselves to god because they have not renewed their mind you know as they encounter the word of god to accept the word of god for what it is so basically a lukewarm christian is like a canal man so you're lukewarm in terms of like you know, you 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 believe in God. You um. You believe the things that are written in the Bible, but you still wanna you still wanna have a good time in the world. You know, you're still very into like you know like partying, drinking, all that stuff. But so you're like on the fence. You're like in between. It's like one leg here, one here, there, one leg there. Okay, so that is the Kano man. So I hope that makes sense. So there's a natural man and the Kano man. Now the last one is the spiritual man. The spiritual man is who we are all striving to become. Um, Through experience and working with the Holy Spirit, the Word of God has become a governing factor in this person's life. So they do everything that they do according to the Word of God. You know, they look to the Word of God to see what what the Word of God says regarding whatever that situation is in their life. By faith, the Word of God has become life to them. So the word of God comes alive to them through their ability to allow the Holy Spirit to renew their hearts, renew their minds, and renew their understanding of the word of God. So we're going to open to Galatians chapter 5, 16. It says, But I say, walk and live habitually in the Holy Spirit, responsive to and controlled and guided by the Spirit. Then you will certainly not gratify the cravings and the desires of the flesh, which is of human nature without God. And then 1 Corinthians chapter 2, it says, And we are setting these truths forth in words, not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Holy Spirit, combining and interpreting spiritual truths with spiritual language to those who possess the Holy Spirit. Okay, so the truth means the word of God, right? So the Holy Spirit gives us interpretation of the word of God. That's why I said, like when you read your Bible, you should pray and ask the Holy Spirit to give you revelation. Um, an understanding of what you're reading. So I hope that makes sense in terms of the three types of um, of the three classes of people that exist in the world. And like I said, all of us fall into one of these three categories. I've explained all that and I will come back to it later on in the video where like it will all make sense. But I just wanted to mention that to just kind of give an introduction. So now we're going to really explore what faith is so the main scripture is hebrews chapter 11 verses 6 but without faith it is impossible to please and be satisfactory to him him is god for whoever for whoever would come near to god must necessarily believe that god exists and that he is the rewarder of those who earnestly and diligently seek him the word of god clearly tells us that if you have no faith you cannot please God. Um, and he says, 
that for whoever would come near to God necessarily believe that God exists, right? And that he is the rewarder of those who earnestly and diligently seek him out. So for you to have faith, you have to believe that God exists, right? Know that without faith, you cannot please God. So then what is faith? Now let's go back to Hebrews chapter Hebrews 11 uh, verse 1. So it reads, now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title or deed, the title deed of the things that we hope for being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality. Faith perceiving as real fact that is not revealed to the senses. This is the amplified version I'm reading, right? So he has some more explanations in there. In another version, it reads, faith is the substance of things hoped for and is the evidence of things that are not seen. So what does that word substance mean? According to Strong's Concordance, right? It says that substance is abstract assurance or support for something. You can't, it's obviously not happening right now in the present, which is why you are hoping for it. It's something that it is in the future tense almost that, you know, you hope that this is going to take place and this is going to come to fruition. So faith now is the evidence or the substance right or the uh, or the abstract assurance that that thing that you're hoping for will happen so then according to strong's concordance faith the word faith itself it means a moral conviction of truth or the truthfulness of god it also says is the system of religious gospel truth itself okay the system of religious gospel truth itself a moral conviction of truth or the truthfulness of God. So moral conviction, like I said, conviction means to have a firmly held belief about something. So you're convinced without a doubt of the truth. The truth, what is the truth? The truth is the word of God, or the truth is God. And um, of the truthfulness of God, you believe of a truth that God's word does not lie. Okay, so I hope that's making sense. So basically, Faith is the word of God and us having faith as our substance of things that we're hoping for. It means that the word of God is the proof that things that we're hoping for will happen. So I hope that makes sense. I just had to do a voiceover because I felt like I wasn't really hitting the point as good as I wanted to. Okay, back to the video. So then now that I've kind of explained what faith is, we've established that, um, you know, having faith is basically having a belief beyond reason in the truthfulness of God and a belief in the truth, which is the word of God, right? So then there are two kinds of faith, right? There's temporary faith and there's saving or living faith. Now let's define what temporary faith is. Temporary faith is the kind of faith that a canal man would have, right? So it is the faith that is influenced by religious sympathy, okay? So it's very, very flaky faith. It's like one day you believe, one day you don't believe. Um, it, it's not steady. It is not unshakable faith. It is not living faith. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Then saving faith or living faith, which is the type of faith that us believers are supposed to have, is the type of faith that it has eternal life inseparably connected to it. Okay? Like eternal life is built into this our faith right which this, which is why it is called living faith i want us to open to ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 for it is by free grace god's unmerited favor that you are saved or delivered from judgment and made partakers of christ's salvation through your faith and this salvation is not yourselves of your own doing it came not through your own striving but it's the gift of god right so through our faith we are saved that's why it's called saving faith or living faith. It gives us eternal life, right? And um, the object of saving faith is the whole revealed word of God. Faith accepts and believes the word of God as the very truth, okay? So it doesn't argue. There's no, that, like I said, there's no contention there with the word of God. The word of God is the very truth, right? And that's why it also says that God is the way, the truth, and the life. That's why it says that this type of faith is this type of faith is living faith because it gives you life. Okay, it gives you hope. It gives you like hope for a better tomorrow. Um, so yeah, it keeps you alive essentially. Um, so then, 
how do we gain or how do we as Christians, like how can we strive to attain this living faith and this saving faith that the word of God says that we should have? This faith that gives you living eternal life. Um, let's open to Romans 10 verse 17. All right, so Romans 10 verse 17, he says, So faith comes by hearing what is told and what is heard comes by preaching. Of the message that came from the lips of Christ, the Messiah himself. So faith comes by hearing the word of God, essentially, right? Um, so basically, that's why the Bible also says that we need to meditate on the word of God day and night. Because constantly hearing the word of God renews your faith. It gives you life. It gives you reassurance of the truth in which you're reading, right? You believe it more strongly. It it holds um it holds weight in your life. It guides your um your decision making. It builds your relationship with the Holy Spirit. So having faith is believing in the word of God, believing in the truthfulness of the word of God, believing in God himself because God is his word and his word is truth. When you have faith is it's just basically you agreeing with what's in the Bible and having no no doubt in your heart, in your mind about what's in the Bible and believing that what you're reading in this Bible, it doesn't only apply to the people in the Bible that you're reading about or the people you see around you. It also applies to you as well as you've accepted that you know, the word of, as you've accepted and you said to God that, you know, God, I believe you are my savior and you died for my sins and you've accepted God's salvation, then you should accept his word and you should accept everything that has come out from his mouth, essentially, which is what is in the Bible. Okay. You should accept it beyond reason and without any kind of contradiction or contention or any kind of thoughts that goes against that word. Does that make sense? So this is having unshakable faith, having that saving faith, having that living faith that regardless of what the circumstances, I know that this God that I'm reading about in this Bible is the same God of Abraham. He's the same God in the past of yesterday. He's the same God today and he's the same God uh, tomorrow, right? And he's the same God forever. So he's the same God that is going to see me through whatever situation that I'm going through. Regardless of how my situation continues to change in life, my God does not change. You need to have this understanding and this like, like you need to grasp this with all your heart, honestly. Like the reason why the word of God is not being effective in your life is because you don't believe it. Because if you truly believed it and you held it true and just close to your heart, it would be effective in your life as well. So we are lacking in our capacity to fully trust the word of God enough for it to take shape in our lives. So we must have a conviction so strongly in the word of God and it is our degree of persuasion and conviction that would turn our situations around and open doors for us. It is the part of the word of God that you believe that will work for you. And you need to believe the whole word of God as as promises to you, right? God saying that you are now his child and you accepting him as your father, that means that whatever it is that he said to Abraham that was also his child also applies to you. Regardless of what my situation is telling me in the physical, what my physical senses are seeing regarding the situation, my my spiritual senses uh, that are holding truth in the word of God are saying otherwise. This physical situation is saying to me that I'm broke. It's saying to me that there's no there's no uh, money in my account. But according to the word that my father wrote, he said that I will prosper. He said that I will be a lender and not a borrower. Okay? A lot of people who are believers, who are Christians, right, in the church, are struggling with this spirit called a religious spirit. So what is a religious spirit, um, you may ask? So it is basically, it's the spirit that is ever learning, but it never comes to the knowledge of truth. They don't change or renew their mind. They never renew their spirit. They never really come into genuine contact with that truth and with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit isn't in their hearts. They're just almost doing things just for show. It's a spirit of hypocrisy. If you read about, if you read in the Bible about the Pharisees, right? The Pharisees had a very religious spirit. 
um working in them basically what they would do is they were very um they knew the word of god they knew the bible from front from genesis to revelation they knew everything that was in the bible but their lives did not show that if that makes sense their lives were they were living contrary to the things to the laws of god and they were living mostly on religious traditions in the society and not according to the laws that god put in his bible and they would claim that you know they were priests and and um they were people of god but they would condemn somebody else and stone somebody to death because they committed adultery so it's like they were very very in tuned with like laws and traditions of the land but the laws and traditions of god they did not follow those laws and traditions so they were hypocrites that's why the bible also called them hypocrites um so they are simply going through the motions of religious practice without any there's no inward transformation that's why i said the holy spirit did not live in them first timothy chapter 4 verse 1 it says but the holy spirit distinct distinctly and expressly declares that in latter times some will turn away from faith faith okay the word of god giving attention to deluding and seducing spirits religious spirits and doctrines that demons teach okay it says through the hypocrisy and pretensions of liars whose consciences are seared or cauterized who forbid people to marry and teach them to abstain from certain kinds of food which god created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and have an increasingly clear knowledge of the truth so it's like so it's basically this uh, scripture is basically saying that um that in latter times so end times which is the times that we're in now there'll be a lot of people that would come up and they turn away from the word of god it's like people that preach or that or that um subscribe to new age the new age movement that's going on right like they they talk about it like it's something spiritual which it is it's, it's spiritual but it's demonic like demonic spiritual things right so they talk about it and they and they say oh yeah there's nothing wrong with this like i'm just using sage to cleanse my house to cleanse spirits blase 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 but then they don't know that they're subscribing or maybe they do know they're subscribing to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons right but then there's even christians that practice these things christians that use sage there's christians that you know they use um sound bowls right to do all those things and they believe that it's holy and they believe that there's nothing wrong with it and they would argue with you when you tell them what you're doing is witchcraft they will argue with you and tell you there's nothing wrong with what i'm doing um uh it's just cleansing the atmosphere and cleansing the spirit but then there's no word of god there's no faith right there's no word of god to back up what they're doing where in the bible does it say to use sage and to use sound bowls they cannot bring up that argument right because that religious spirit is essentially blinding their thinking like they they can't um what's it called they can't see past what they're doing and they can't take correction for what they're doing is wrong then the next thing that would happen is they'll probably turn to you and say you're being judgmental you're supposed to be a christian like me why are you judging me let god judge me they said no man should judge <laughs> you know what i mean like they get very defensive of what they're doing right um but yeah so that's basically what the religious spirit is now to kind of um connect this whole religious spirit behavior into what i'm talking about in faith is as you can see from the religious spirit like having a religious spirit is like your actions do not go with what you believe so that should also tell you that when you have faith faith also has to do with your actions right so your actions show your level of faith okay that's why the bible also says that faith without works is dead what is works works is your actions works is the things that you do so it's not enough to just say that you have faith and you believe in god but then when situations arise it's like where's your faith everything turns around for you and you start to doubt and you start to worry and you're crying about different things when all you have to do is cast your cares onto God, just like what it says in the Bible. That's all you have to do, and God will take care of you. It's like, where's your faith? Okay, so we're gonna open James chapter 2. 
verses 14 to 26 okay but the first i'm going to read verse 26 first it says for as the human body apart from the spirit is lifeless so faith apart from its works of obedience is also dead so like i said it's not enough for you to just say that you believe the word of god and you subscribe to the word of god but you don't live your life like somebody that believes the word of god um you're not obedient to the word of god that's canal man type of thinking where they do not obey the word of god they do not submit to the word of god and they they submit to their flesh let's go back to uh verse 14 and we can read from verse 14 what is the use of profit my brethren for anyone who profess to have faith if he has no good works to show for it can such faith save the soul if a brother or a sister is poorly clad and lacks food for each day and one of you says to him, goodbye, keep yourself warm and well fed without giving him the necessities for the body. So the food and the, and the clothes. What good does that do? Verse 17. So also faith, if it does not have works, which is deeds and actions of obedience to back it up by itself, it is destitute of power, which means that it is inoperative or it is dead. Verse 18. But someone will say to you then, you say you have faith and I have good works. Now you show me your alleged faith apart from any good works if you can. And I by good works of obedience will show you my faith. So this verse 18 is basically saying that. So say for example somebody comes to me right. And they say to me. So you claim that you have faith right. I say yes I have faith. And then the person says to me that. Well I have good works or, or obedience to show my faith. Now show me your faith by your good works like show me the 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 acts of obedience that you've done to show your faith um to show your belief and your trust in god show me your obedience uh to prove this the person that already has the good works there's not they don't have to prove anymore that they have faith because they are already living by it does that make sense they're already obeying the words of god they are already showing with their life and their way of life that they believe in the word of god so even just by me seeing their actions I can already tell that yes this person believes in the word of god because of what they do but if somebody else just says with their mouth right that they have faith it's like then i I don't really know if they truly have faith right because maybe their actions are contradicting what they're saying or maybe they have no actions at all does that make sense you guys it's kind of like how we say you know like actions speak louder than words that's basically what the bible is also saying as well right so um verse 19 let me blend this concealer okay so verse 19 says so you believe that god is one and you do well so do the demons believe and shudder verse 20 are you willing to be shown proof you foolish unproductive spiritually deficient fellow that faith apart from good works is inactive and ineffective and worthless verse 21 it says was not our forefather abraham shown to be justified made acceptable to god by his works when he brought the, to the altar as an offering his own son isaac verse 22 it says you see that his faith was cooperating with his works and his faith was completed and it reached its supreme expression when he impl implemented it by good works does that make sense and so the scripture was fulfilled that says abraham believed in god and this was accounted to him as righteousness which is conformity to god's will in thought and in deed and he was called god's friend he was called god's friend because his actions um supplemented his faith right so his actions went in alignment with his faith his actions were in alignment with his belief okay and god called him his friend so verse 24 it says you see that a man is justified or pronounced righteous before god through what he does and not alone through faith um through works of obedience as well as what he believes okay so faith is what you believe believing in the word of god and then your good works are your acts of obedience to the word of god verse 25 it says so also with rahab the harlot was she not shown to be justified by good deeds when she took in the scouts and sent them away by a different route so that's a story in the bible um 
but yeah so basically what this is saying to us is that like if we say that we believe something then would we not align our thoughts our words and actions to be in accordance to that thing that makes sense right whether or not you believe or not right whether or not you hold true hold true the word of god it doesn't change who god is so it's honestly for your own good to become in alignment with his word because regardless he's still going to be the same god he's not going to change because you chose not to be in alignment with him okay so um you're better off being in alignment with him so you might as well begin to obey his laws and practice his laws so that they can actually come come to life in your life does that make sense you guys i really hope that's making sense um let me set my face i feel like i'm so behind on the makeup part like oh my god i want us to open to matthew chapter 7 verse 24 to 27 let's see what that has to say about um faith with works you say so everyone who hears these words of mine and acts upon them obeying them will be like a sensible or prudent or practical or a wise man who builds his house upon a rock and the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against the house yet it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock and everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house upon a, who built his house upon a sand upon the sand and rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against the house and it fell and great and complete was the fall of it. There's so many people in the Bible, they were all very, very young, but they did so many great things and God used them. So I also want you to have this understanding that regardless of your age, regardless of your race, regardless of your ethnicity, regardless of your current situation, God can use you and God can can turn your life around and God can use you as an example to other people and he can just transform your whole life all you have to do is be in alignment with his word and be in alignment with his will and let him know that god you know i'm a vessel i'm here use me okay so there's daniel there's david um esther ruth all of these people were very young people they were like 17 18 19 20 in their early 20s and god used them so miraculously and today we read about them all the time and there's god put them in the bible for us to see their lives and say, okay, if God can do this for David, if God can do this for Joshua, for Jonah, then he can do it for me as well. Okay, so I want everyone to open their Bibles to Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs, but be transformed or changed by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideals and its new attitude so that you may prove for yourselves what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. As believers in Christ, as we've accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we've come into a new being. We've left our old lives and our old selves, and we've come into a new life and a new self. So in the same way, we cannot be having the same mindset, the same beliefs, the same thought process, because we are now new beings, right? Does that make sense? So the first part of that scripture, it says, do not be conformed to this world. And this basically warns us that the world system, so like pop culture and the ways of thinking of this world, they're not in accordance to God's word. If they were, God would not tell us to not be conformed to them. The ways and thinking of this world will try to corrupt our spirit and try to make us follow or conform to an ungodly pattern right so if you hear you know like the music nowadays um they're all very like sexual and sensual the music videos being produced um a lot of tv shows a lot of movies um even the ones that are about high school and stuff like that they all involve sex and it's just very perverted basically um another example is worrying and having anxiety I find that on YouTube right now, it's it is very it's almost like, it's almost like a normal thing to have anxiety, to have anxiety and depression. Meanwhile, this is like a psychological problem and a spiritual problem as well that is not normal. 
but everybody left right and center has anxiety so many young people i work at a clinic so so many young people at my clinic they come in and they're depressed and we're putting them on like antidepressants at age 14 age 13 like it just it's very very worrisome to me and the bible says like if you're living in god's word god's word says that we should cast our worries and our cares to him let's open to Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 to 7. It reads, Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, continue to make your wants known to God. And God's peace shall be yours that tranquil the state of soul, the state of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ, and so fearing nothing from God and bearing content with it earthly lot of whatever sort that is okay this amplified version is very long um it says and god's peace which transcends all understanding shall garrison and mount guard over your heart and mind so it says with prayer and petition take every every of your worry to god cast all of your worries to god and god will give you the peace that surpasses all understanding but in this ungodly worldly system it's like when you have it's like they make anxiety and depression seem like it's so commonplace right and people are just worrying and worrying and worrying about tomorrow worrying about the unknown they worry we worry about everything and the bible and the word of god says we should not worry so it's like if we claim and we say that we have faith and we claim that we're believers why are we not obeying that word of god that tells us not to worry do you get what I'm going with this? Um, and where I'm going with this? Like there's young people committing suicide left, right and center because they're being bullied or they just feel like they're so hopeless and so worthless and nobody cares for them. And just these evil thoughts just keep pounding and pounding their head. And because there's no one that is guiding them um, to show them that there is true, there's a way, there's a hope and there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Just don't give up. Just wake up another day and just strive. Read your Bible. Pray about it. Tell God your problems. Nobody's telling them these things. All they're seeing on social media is drugs and sex and alcohol and just canal music and canal behavior that it's like this keeps feeding their minds with just nonsense that is not even helping the situation at all. So the second part of the scripture talks about... Um, it says, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, okay? Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You guys should write this down. The battleground between conformity to the world and being transformed is within the mind of the believer. So the battleground, remember I told you in the last video, Overcoming Fear, where I told you your mind is a place of territory that the devil can also or wants to overcome. So your mind is, it is the battleground that is in between conforming to the world and being transformed. That mindset that you have, whatever your mindset is, whatever beliefs that you're holding, your mind is basically the, um, is the battleground for that. And your mind is, it's almost like when you say, you know, you're on the fence about something. Um, when you're on the fence about something, the fence is your mind. One side has renewing of your spirit. The other side has conforming to the world. So now it's up to you to decide, are you going to conform to the world or are you going to renew your spirit, right? Okay, so I hope that's making sense. And um, we must think differently as believers. Many of us live based off of our feelings and we live on just looking for the next thing, the next five steps to follow, looking for things to do. And we don't really want to renew our spirits or renew our mind. We just want to look for what's the quick fix, you know? What's the five steps to achieving this? What is this, this, and that? You know what I mean? Now that we have the understanding of what faith is and how we know that we have to stand during these times and this um, changing times on planet Earth, how can we make sure that our faith is unshakable? How can we make sure that regardless of what situation comes our way we're going to trust the will of god for our life and even though we don't understand what to do next and we don't know what the next step is or what the future holds 
just having the faith and the hope to take that next step okay is what really matters and what tells god that you know god i don't know what my life is going to turn into right but i trust you and i trust your word so what's the first thing the first thing to have unshakable the first thing you have to do to have unshakable faith is to meditate on the word of god day and night do it consistently you guys don't just do it today and then you don't do it again till like next week you have to consistent consistently meditate on the word of god let me give you guys some scriptures psalm 119 verse 11 second timothy uh, chapter 3 verse 15 john chapter 1 verses 1 to 10 so the second point i have for you guys is to engage in strategic prayers and to pray without season okay so first was to meditate on the word of god and now i'm saying you should engage in strategic prayers what do i mean when i say strategic prayers i mean prayers that infused with the word of god you need to find the scriptures that that specifically talking about the situation that you are going through and pray those scriptures in your prayer god says that we should bring him in remembrance of his word and he also says that we should basically um we should basically defend our case so show him his it's like it's like spiritual warfare is really and truly like going to court for something okay so god says that we should tell him okay why should you be justified in this situation why should you be the right one in this situation now you say i should be the right one god because you promised me as my father that this this and this and that does that make sense so you have to pray back his word to him whatever the situation is if it's financial situations you look for scriptures that talk about uh finances and blessings and abundance and where god says that we will not lack or we will not need anything and you need to pray back those promises to him you can't just be saying to god oh god you know you 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 you're seeing the situation that I'm in and you allow me to be in the situation. What did I do to you? Blah, 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 blah. It's like, you're not moving anything. Like, yes, sure, your your prayers, your tears are touching God's heart. But it's like, he's, he's really waiting for you to just, once you just give him back his word, he'll be like, you know what? Oof, this is my child. I can't let you down. Like, I can't go, my word cannot go back to me void. Like, I have to fulfill my promises. I am the same God. I do not change. I have to fulfill my promises. Bless the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his commandments, hearkening to the voice of his word. So even angels that are sent to minister to us on earth, because we have angels all around us, right? Angels that are sent to us specifically to protect us from unknown fights that we are fighting. So even these angels that are sent to us, they, they only act on the word of God. They can't act on you murmuring and crying and saying, oh God, why me? They only act when once you begin to pray the word of God, which is why I said pray strategic prayers. Once you begin to pray the word of God, the angels begin to go into action for you. They begin to go into, uh, they begin to war for you. So the next point that I have for you is to fast. So if you're somebody that, you know, you've prayed and, You've been talking to God about something and you just feel like the situation is not changing. It's been so long. You've been praying about the same thing, but it's not seeming to budge. My friend, incorporate fasting into your prayer. And what fasting does is it just moves you to, it opens up a new realm of heavenly places for you. Like it moves you to a new realm of prayer and it moves it activates your spiritual helpers which are the angels in heaven once god sees that you are you are subduing your flesh which is what you do when you fast you don't eat right you are subduing your flesh in order to grow your spirit man you're able to really and truly hear the holy spirit speaking to you and the holy spirit will speak to you so specifically regarding that situation that you'll be like yes that is the word that i needed and Fasting is just so powerful because it kills unbelief as well. Because once you begin to fast and your prayers are beginning to be answered in a faster, in a different way, like your belief system begins to grow. You begin to trust in the word of God more because you're seeing it in action in your life. Does that make sense? The next thing is to practice the word of God. 
So we've been talking so long about uh, faith without works is dead. So you have to practice the word of God. If you're not practicing the word of God, you're not going to see the word of God come alive in your life. And you are just living a lie to yourself, really, um, by saying that you believe in the word of God, but you don't practice it. And when I say practice it, that means um, obeying the commands and the, and, and, and the, and the laws of God, okay? Don't only be a hearer of the word, also be a doer. Um, James chapter 1, verses 22 to 25. Let's go there and see what that has to say. But be doers of the word, obey the message, and not merely listeners to it. Betraying yourselves. So you're doing yourself a disservice by only being a hearer of the word and not obeying or putting the word into action. Um, For if anyone only listens to the word without obeying it, And being a doer of it, he is like a man who looks carefully at his own natural face in a mirror. For he thoughtfully observes himself and then goes off and he promptly forgets what he looks like. Verse 25. But he who looks carefully into the faultless law, which is the law of God, the law of liberty, and is faithful to it. So faithful, you are obeying it, you are believing it. And perseveres in looking into it. So you continue to study the word of God. Being not a heedless listener. So you're not just a listener. <laughs> who forgets. Um, but who forgets. But an active doer who obeys. He shall be blessed in his doing. His life of obedience. Guys. There's a blessing attached to obeying the word of God. So why wouldn't you want to obey the word of God? You know what I mean? So John... Uh, chapter 13 verse 17 so it said if you know these things if you know these things blessed and happy and to be envied are you if you practice them if you act accordingly and really do them okay like i'm telling you guys it comes with a blessing again all right guys so the last point i have for you is never ever 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 it's so important but it's so neglected in this day and age Don't ever lose your joy. Joy is your strength, okay? Having joy, having hope, that is your strength to keep pushing on. That is your strength to not give up. That is your strength to know that you will overcome a situation, okay? Um, So never ever lose your joy. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. Let's open our Bibles to Nehemiah. It says, Then Ezra told them, Go your way, eat the fat, Drink the sweet drink and send portions to him for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. And be not grieved and depressed. For the joy of the Lord is your strength and stronghold. The joy of the Lord is your strength and stronghold. So what's a a way for you to sustain and keep your joy? Praise and worship. Guys, it's so powerful, praise and worship. It's crazy. When things are going south... And the devil is trying his hardest to bring you down. Just just pick one night and just start to, to do praise and worship. Just do praise and worship. And it will confuse the enemy's camp like never before. It's like we're trying to bring this girl down. We're trying to make her sad about this situation. Why is she not depressed? Why is she not angry? Why is she not cursing God? But here she is praising and worshiping God. There are some times when it's like, you don't even have the strength to pray where like you're so heavily burdened by a situation that you can't even open your mouth to pray just start playing uh praise and worship gospel music and it will uplift your spirit i remember there was a time when um i was going through a, a period of just very very bad depression and i was just so sad you know a lot of my childhood trauma that was the period when a lot of it was coming back to me so um, it made me very, very depressed. And so I didn't know what to do. I couldn't pray. I didn't know what to pray for. Like, I was just like, ugh. And then I just decided to play gospel music. And just as the song was playing, I just started to feel like this heaviness that was on my heart and on my soul. It just began to lift and lift and lift as the song was playing. I wasn't singing along, nothing, just because I was hearing this song. And I was hearing this um, the lyrics to this song. And the burden just started to lift from my spirit. And from that day, that's when I really, really understood the power of praise and worship. When the Lekki massacre that night that it happened 
in Nigeria, I was so distraught. I was so heavily burdened, like, especially because it was something that I was, I was trusting God, like, God, please protect them, please protect them, the protesters, please keep them, Lord, protect them. And then, like, my heart was so heavy that night. I just, for, like, four hours in the night, I just did praise and worship. I said, God, you know what? Like, you alone know what the plan is for this whole situation and this um, battle that we're in. You're the one that has already, you've already seen the end. You already know how it's going to end. So who am I to come and doubt you and to doubt your promises and to doubt your will just because of what I'm seeing now? You know what I mean? So I just started to praise and worship God. And I remember just, I think maybe like maybe an hour into it or so, I just started to smile. Like I just had so much joy and happiness in my spirit and I just felt like the spirit was just telling me it's going to be okay and everything is going to be okay and that was really how I was able to even sleep that night because I I couldn't sleep (laughs) you know um because I was just so stressed out but I'm the praise and worship just really helped me to just lift my spirit um so I'm going to put on my wig and then we're just going to round this up we're going to say a little prayer um and then we'll be done So this I already styled prior to starting the video. The fact that we can't see noticeable differences or noticeable victories in our lives and in our battles and situations, whatever they are, um, it doesn't mean that things are not shifting in the spirit. That's why uh, Paul told us that he said, is it Peter or Paul? I don't know, one of them. He said that um, we should focus on the things that aren't seen and not on the things that are seen because the things that aren't seen are eternal while the things that are seen are temporary so he says we should focus on the unseen so sometimes you may feel in the physical realm that things are happening in your life um your situation is not changing but being steadfast in the word of god you're actually shifting things in the spirit and even though you can't see it it's happening and when things begin to shift in the spirit they will take shape in the physical realm because things happen first in the spirit before they happen in the physical. One disadvantage for man is that we work with time. And so after not seeing victory in our life over a period of time, we begin to feel discouraged and we begin to feel like God is not hearing us, God is not answering our prayers. When we start to feel discouraged because we feel like things are not changing, that gives an opening for the devil to begin to feed our mind with fear, anxiety, and unbelief, and doubt, making us feel like God is not listening to us, God is not hearing us. And many of us, we've gone through this, I've gone through this so many, so many times, like even recently, like, you know, I felt like, God, like, are you hearing me? Are you seeing what's going on? And it's like, you need to remind yourself that, like God is the beginning and the end like he's the author and the finisher of our faith he started writing this story and he's going to finish it he has already seen the end from the beginning from the day you were born it says that God wrote down things for your future and for your purpose even before you came into your mother's womb he wrote down preordained things for your life even before they came to be in the world like guys do you understand the God that you serve don't ever 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 look at your situation like your situation is bigger than god because it is not there's nothing new under the sun so your situation is not so different from what hasn't happened in the past so focus on the will of god and focus on the word of god and you would find a solution to whatever it is that you're worrying about okay so i hope this encourages someone i hope this makes sense So you need to tell yourself that time will not cheat you. Don't let time deceive you. Because if you think about it, time does not exist in the spiritual realm. Um, There's nothing like time. So something that might be 10 years for us here in the physical, that might be one day for God. So it's like when we've we've cried for 10 years, God is like, this is still one day, my daughter. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not the same for us. Like, that's why the Bible says, my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. The way he sees you, you need to come into alignment so that he can see you and he can see your life the way, so that you can see your life the way he sees your life, okay? You need to have the same eye, the same vision as God and be in alignment with his word, okay? All right, so now I'm just going to, this is a prayer that I got from one of the preachers that I watch. 
So Father, we ask for the grace to be consistent. Let God be true and every situation in my life be a lie. There is grace to remain. I receive a fresh supply from the throne. I may cry, but I refuse to give up. My God will arise like a mighty warrior. My pain of today will become my testimony tomorrow. My God cannot fail. If I remain, the yokes of darkness are going to bow. You guys need to remember there is a contention every single time um, for our destiny. And that's why the attacks are so heavy. But greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Our God has overcome this world. Our God has conquered and he has made us more than conquerors. We are ambassadors of Christ. So we don't even belong to this kingdom. So whatever it is that the enemy is throwing at us, we serve a God and a bigger God that his kingdom is so great that it is greater than this world that we see. So guys, pray this prayer. Infuse your prayers with the word of God. Meditate on the word of God. Write down scriptures all around you, all your, all around your house, on your phone, everywhere, so that you are constantly being reminded of what the Word of God says about your life. Read, listen to sermons, listen to the uh, gospel music, guys. Even your relationships, find friends that also are looking to grow in the spirit, so that two, like both of you, can grow together. Uh, surround yourself with people that love god and people that also want to grow in god so that way you know you're in alignment you're always in alignment okay i think this message is very very important especially right now the election is taking place tomorrow in america november 3rd um we don't know what's going to happen it could go left at any second um things in nigeria i don't even know everything is at a standstill there's so much happening in Africa, so much innocent bloodshed, there's so much evil in this world. And like I said before, the enemy knows that his time is very short, which is why he's, he's basically working overtime to make sure he accomplishes and he takes as many souls as he can to his kingdom of hell. So uh, you are not going to be one of those people, God forbid. Um, so I want you guys to really, really sharpen your faith. And be attentive, pay attention during this time. Be attentive spiritually and be attentive physically, even around you. Um, we're approaching the month of December. It's the end of the year. And so that's a, that's a lot of the time when um, a lot of witchcraft and things happen. You know, kidnapping of children, uh, sacrifices, all these things. They, like the enemies camp, they really go ham at the end of the year. The end of the year and the beginning of the year, they're two very essential periods. So you want to really make sure your faith is steadfast, your faith is unshakable. And you need to understand that you will overcome. Whatever it is that you're going through, God is your strength. Uh, God will give you joy. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. I need you to have hope, okay? I need you guys to understand that you will be okay. And greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Okay, you guys, so I thank you so much for watching. I hope this video touched you or gave you a new perspective, a new understanding on faith and having unshakable faith. And I hope um, this video just gives you enlightenment on what to do during hard times. Um, thank you guys so much again for watching. And like I said, I'll leave a transcript of basically everything i said and scriptures on my website so click the website in the description box and also there'll probably be a card here um but yes yeah, so i thank you guys so much god bless you all god bless you all um i pray that god keeps your family safe during this time i pray for protection over your lives i read i decree and I declare untimely death is not any of our portions in the name of jesus <clears throat> destinies are going to be fulfilled on this earth God is, has blessed us. God has favored us in the eyes of men. We are blessed. We are more than conquerors. We will, we will persevere and we will stand strong and we will stand firm. So God, I just thank you, Lord, for your word today. And I hope it blesses someone. And I hope this um, message reaches whoever it is supposed to reach. Because I know that God works in mysterious ways. And he will always find the person that needs to hear this at the right time. So thank you guys so much for watching once again. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and thumbs up and share with a friend who needs it. And yeah, stay tuned for more episodes and other videos as well. I'm going to be doing, I think I want to do like a lookbook type of video 
um, very soon on my channel so stay tuned for that and yeah thank you all so much for watching i love you guys so 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 much God bless you.